What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we're gonna be answering more of your Bolt questions. So I made a one year review video of my 2022 Chevy Bolt EUV here. You guys ask a ton of questions. I answered a bunch of them in my Q and A video part one. I'll have it linked below. So if you don't see your question here and you think it may have been answered previously, go check that video out and definitely go watch that video anyway, because I answered a ton of good questions in there. But I've got a couple residual questions that I've been getting that I wanna go ahead and answer in this video. Let's go ahead and get started with number one. And that is, can you add Super Cruise at any time on the Premier models or only at purchase? This is a great question. It's not a strictly software feature. It has hardware elements. One of those things being the little LED bar that goes here at the top of the steering wheel. Obviously mine doesn't have it because mine's an LT, but it also has a little sensor here that detects whether or not you're paying attention to the road in front of you. So unfortunately it cannot be added after the fact. It has to be uh, included on your build at the time of purchase, either uh, straight from the factory or purchasing from a dealership that has one in stock that has the Super Cruise add-on, which is $2,500. Now I made a video recently talking about the 2023 Bolt EU and I drove one for the first time with Super Cruise and it has my Super Cruise first impressions. I'll have that linked down below. So this question from Anthony has a couple different parts to it. I'm looking into leasing a 2023 Bolt EUV once it becomes available. I live in New Jersey, so our winters can get pretty cold here. Do you happen to know on worst case scenario in the freezing cold temperatures, how much range the Bolt will give you on a full charge? So obviously I don't live in a freezing cold climate, especially not all the time. So I don't know like worst case scenario, but I know that in the winters here in Kentucky, it can get, you know, 20s, 30s ish. Sometimes it dips way, way, way below freezing close to zero. And I've only had it for one winter. So I'm only speaking off that experience, but I was getting like 140 ish, 150 ish miles. Um, best case. I talked a little bit about that in my one year review, kind of how I was doing. It's definitely a pretty significant drop off from the 240 ish miles you can get kind of peak uh, that you can get during the warmer months, especially if you're using a lot of heating and things like that. So I would recommend if you live in a freezing cold climate, get a model that has heated seats and heated steering wheel. So the premier model. And then he says, lastly, on a full charge, how many miles could you go in total before it doesn't go anymore? I know you say you go around 259 miles. That's for the EV, not the EUV. But he says, I have a feeling you could probably get more out of it, especially if you don't speed and use climate control. Thanks for taking the time to read all my questions. All the best. Anthony, thanks for all those questions. Now, like I said, 259 miles is the EV specs. The EUV is closer to like 239 miles. Um, and really, I haven't done this personally, but maybe out of spec review is who made it, but they did a range test going from fully charged to zero on the Bolt. Uh, driving 70 miles per hour on the highway. And they got, I think, 235 or 237 miles. It was one of those. I'll have their exact calculations on screen for you in case I'm misquoting it. But they did a full test. I'll have it linked down below. Go check it out. They made a great video there. Can you use the Tesla supercharger on the vehicle? And if so, how does it work? So you can use Tesla charging stations, but they have to be the um, non-supercharger variants, so they're kind of destination chargers, I think is what they're called. Those ones you can find certain locations, but you want to make sure that you find the right one, because if you try and hook it up to a supercharger, A, it's not going to work, B, you have to have an adapter. Anyway, the adapters are relatively cheap on Amazon, but you're going to need that, and you're only going to be able to use the destination charger. Superchargers are not going to work. The destination chargers are basically just level two chargers. They'll give you average speeds, uh, for charging, but it's not going to be anything like a supercharger. Now, Tesla says they are going to be opening up their supercharger network to all EVs in the future, and I think it's going to be relatively soon. Everything with Tesla has to be taken with a little asterisk, a little uh, teaspoon of salt there because they move at a whole different pace there. So relatively soon, no idea what that means, but they've been talking about it for a while. So hopefully that comes up in the near future. This next question says, have you noticed the fast charging speed being software throttled compared to the older model? If so, how has it changed? So I've never fast charged either Bolt, the 2021 and you know back variants or the 2022 or 2023. I've never fast charged one time. So I have literally zero experience with fast charging Maybe I should do it just for the heck of it, go find one, but we don't really have many here. I think we have one. So this next question says, hi, how are you? 
I'm hanging in there. And it says it's hard to find info on the nav that comes with the sun and sound option or sun and sound package. Does it just enable the nav button on the center console? How useful is this navigation? So I'm not a big fan of in-vehicle navigations in general. I just don't find them that useful, especially with basically every modern vehicle coming with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, using Waze, Google Maps, Apple Maps, any third party navigation on your display is so much better. I have yet to find a manufacturer default navigation system that is really worthwhile. Having said that, Chevy's in-vehicle navigation system, especially the one I've used on the Bolt, is pretty good. It's fluid, it's responsive, but I still don't think it's worth the price. If that's all you wanna upgrade with the Sun & Sound package for is like a sunroof and navigation, don't do it have other reasons. If you're a big in-vehicle navigation person, it's definitely not a downside. Some other manufacturers, it is a downside. On the Bolt, it's all right. This question says, hey, love your videos. Thank you so much. Wanted to know if I could ride high in a Bolt EV or EUV like I could in a small SUV. I've been told by some people you can and others the seats are the same as a regular car. You're the Bolt God, so you would know. I don't know if I'd call myself the Bolt God. Hey, I'll take it though. And then puts in parentheses, I'm 5'5". Five five. So I'm 6'1", so eight inches taller? Yeah, math, I'm good at math, really good at math. Obviously, like I'm going to naturally sit higher because I'm taller, but the Bolt doesn't have crazy ground clearance, right? Like my Crosstrack had 8.7 inches of ground clearance, so it felt like it rode higher like a normal SUV. This is definitely more like a sedan ride. It's definitely a lower ride. You feel like you're closer to the ground, but you can use the handle on the side of the seat here and pump this seat up so that it, you know, you stand taller, you can see over the hood a lot easier and things like that. I'm contemplating getting a Bolt EUV. They have a deposit on one, but something that's keeping them on the fence with going through with it is the brake slash blinker lights in the rear. I find it such a safety hazard that they're in the bumper. Has that bothered you or perhaps have you noticed people following you, not seeing you braking or using your blinker? Do you think there's a way to rewire the lights so it uses the top ones in the hatch and only uses the ones in the bumper when the trunk is open? So with the rewiring question, I'm the absolute wrong person to ask about rewiring, but I'm gonna assume that's not possible or maybe even not legal. I don't know if you can manipulate that in any way. I'm the wrong person to ask. Um, maybe someone else in the comments can help you out there. But as far as kind of noticing um, it from a safety perspective, while they are definitely in a weird place, they're not the only vehicle that has them in a weird place. It's becoming more and more common on these smaller compact hatchbacks, but I haven't noticed anything. Like I haven't been rear-ended. I haven't noticed people kind of, you know, slamming on their brakes or anything like that. It, it, people seem to be able to see it. I don't think it's as big of a deal as people think it is, but again, your experience may vary. I wouldn't let that be too much of a deciding factor because I think if it were too much of a safety risk, Chevy would have come up with an alternate idea. This question says, I just bought one today. Awesome, congrats on the new purchase. I wanna charge at work, but it's an open lot at a university. I read you shouldn't leave them plugged in and unattended. Is it safe to plug in at a lot and go to class or go eat, or should you wait with the car? I guess inherently, whenever you leave your vehicle or anything else unattended, there's risks, right? Unless you're using like a Tesla destination charger, like I mentioned earlier in the video, you know, the adapter could get stolen, sure, but you could also set it to where when it gets unplugged, the alarm automatically starts going off on your vehicle. So there's always that option. I don't really think any of those things are at play here. So outside of that, you know, there's like, I don't know if you're considering like fire risk. I don't, I don't think any of that really applies uh, to the situation you're describing. You're gonna be using a slower level two charger for a long period of time or a short period of time, get a couple miles back. I don't think it's gonna be any big deal. I don't think you should worry about it at all. Another thing to consider is a lot of these structures, you know, that are housing these charging things, they don't expect you to be sitting in the car while you're charging the whole time. If there's a level two charger just sitting in a parking garage, nobody's expecting you to just plug it in and then just sit there. Like you're plugging it in to go inside to the museum or the hotel or wherever you might be staying or visiting. So that's the expectation. So I really, you know, would consider that and not let it really affect you because obviously they put it there for your convenience and they don't expect you to babysit it. So I think you'll be perfectly fine going to eat, going to class, going to work, all that kind of stuff and leaving it plugged in. So thanks so much for watching guys. Drop a like on the video if you loved it. Tell me in the comments down below, do you have more questions? I'd be happy to answer those or make a part three to this video if I get enough questions. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss every single new video the second I hit publish. We'll see you in the next one.